Hare Krishna everyone, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. So I was requested by His Holiness Abhadur Maharaj to make an offering of my Guru Maharaj today being his 83rd Vyasa Puja, Shakyaran's day. <coughs> I have never made this offering before and uh, I was doubtful whether to do it or not but since Maharaj asked me I meditated on it and during Japa this morning I had some inspiration, some strong confirmation in my heart that I should do something. So I'm going to try and just speak what comes to my heart. Some thoughts did come to my heart this morning and I wrote about them as a preliminary offering. I shared earlier. You can read it on my Facebook page. Gosh, Mr. Padma, I do it. Sri Guru Charanam Padma Kevala Bhaktanti Sadma Sri Guru Charanam Padma Kevala Bhakati Sadma Bando Sabandhana Bhante Bando Sabandhana Bando Sabandhana Bhante Bando Muni Savadana Mante Jahara Prasadi Bhai E Bhavaturiya Jai Jahara Prasadi Bhai E Bhavaturiya Jai Krishna Prati Hoida Hoide Krishna Prati Hoida Hoide Krishna Prati Hoida Hoide Krishna Prati Hoida Hoide Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Kitete Kauriya Aitya Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Kitete Kauriya Aitya Ayurna Kauri Ho Mane Asha Ayurna Kauri Narana Kori Ho Mane Asha Narana Kori Ho Mane Asha Shri Guru Charane Rati Eise Uttama Gati Shri Guru Charane Rati Eise Uttama Gati De Prasade Pure Sarambha Asha De Prasade Pure Sarambha Asha De Prasade Pure Sarva Asha De Prasade Pure Sarva Asha Chakudan Dilo De Dhamme Dhamme Prabhu Sein Chakudan Dilo De 
चंद्रन प्रभु से दिव्य ज्ञान दे तो दिव्य ज्ञान दे तो प्रेम भक्ति जाद्या विनाशा जाते प्रेम भक्ति जाद्या विनाशा जाते वेदे गाय जहार चरे तो 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 श्री गुरु करुणा सिंधु आध मज नर बंधु श्री गुरु करुणा सिंधु आध मज नर बंधु लोकनाथ लोके रजी वान लोकनाथ लोके रजी वान लोकनाथ लोके रजी वान लोके रजी वान देहो मोरे पादा छाया ब्रभो गुरु दया देहो मोरे पादा छाया ब्रभो गुरु दया देहो मोरे पादा छाया ब्रभो गुरु दया देहो मोरे पादा छाया एदे जान सुख कृपो
राम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे राम कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम हरे हरे जय राम धमाधव राम माधव श्रीपाद महाराज गुरु पूजा की जाए श्री गुरु वंदना की जाए श्री प्रभुपाद पति तपावन की जाए हाय गौर प्रेमा जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्राज का आचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद भक्ति स्वरूप दामोदर स्वामी श्रीपाद महाराज गुरुदेव की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्राज का आचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद अभय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्राज का आचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव ब्रंद की जय इस्कॉन बी बी टी बी आई फाउंडर आचार्य हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस श्री श्रीमद ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद की जय नामाचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की जय श्री श्री शत गोस्वामी प्रभु की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरि गौरधाम की जय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय मथुरा धाम की जय मायापुर धाम की जय नवरी धाम की जय जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जय द्वारकापुरी धाम की जय गंगा मई की जय यमुना मई की जय भक्ति देवी की जय श्रीमती तुलसी महारानी की जय समवेत भक्त वृंद की जय हरिनाम संकीर्तन यज्ञ की जय हरिनाम संकीर्तन यज्ञ की 
जय हरि नाम संकीर्तन महायज्ञ के जय गौर प्रेमान हरि हरि बोलो ग्लोरी स्तुति असंभव को ग्लोरी स्तुति असंभव को Hare Krishna. Sorry, we disappeared. I don't know. Is it on live or on live? Seems to be live still. My laptop sort of shut down. Never mind, it's still that good. Oh, I'm going down. So, um, I have never been a good disciple. I never made any Vyasa Puja offerings for Sri Asyapalana. I don't think I know him well enough to really say anything. What can we say? All I know is that he went out of his way to show kindness to me. And when I suspected that some people were, it was hard to say it for myself, but I suspected some people were envious and were actually out to destroy me. He came into my life, Krishna sent him. And eventually he told me straight in my face, these people are out to destroy you. Stop trying to make friends with them. They will drive you around in circles. He kept coming. There were some noises there. Give me a moment. Sorry, another phone call, so many interruptions. I just have to ignore it. I don't know if you all can hear me, but anyway, let me try to just glorify. Let me pray to Guru Dev first. Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Sparupada Madra Swami Namami Namo Sad Bhakta Manai Mani Puro Dhaya Chakra Bhupagra Sadhwani Pachanara Maritaya Te Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Shura Vidyatam Yena ಶ್ರೀಗುರೋಹರಿಯುತಪಾಕಮಂಶ್ರೀಗುರುಂಗಾಂಶ್ರೀರೂಪಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗುರಾಂಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೋಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Yes, um, so His Holiness Abhadur Maharaj asked me to make some offering, glorifying my Guru Maharaj. And, uh, well, of course, it's not possible for somebody who's so impure and proud and whatever bad qualities I have to glorify somebody it's so, so saintly and pure as Sri Dhanam Maharaj. Somehow or other, he was very kind to this proud and foolish person. But never mind, since His Holiness Abhidhar Maharaj asked me to, then I meditated on it, and some thoughts did come to my mind, and I felt a confirmation in my heart that I should try to make this Vyasapuja offering. And Maharaj, thank you. You are very kind to me. And the thoughts that came to my mind when I was contemplating your request was, oh, it is so nice to see somebody who happens to be a godbrother of my Guru Maharaj who is not at all envious of him. I mean, it's not his fault that he was born with such divine qualities. Everybody who knew him loved him. Even his school teachers were glorifying him, I remember. And... Uh, Everyone loved him. Like whenever he entered Manipur, the chief minister would come running to see him. The terrorists would come running to see him. Everybody wanted to see him. And he always wanted to smile and be kind to everyone. He wanted everyone to immediately be happy, never to hurt anyone. Something may be wrong, but if you say it in a way, that might cause pain to the other person, even if it's his enemy. He will no, he will not let it go through. No, he'll say, think ten times, think a hundred times, think a thousand times. Don't hurt anyone. Well, I have a bit of this Kshatriya blood in me, maybe, because my father is a Kshatriya nature. But I actually asked Maharaj, Maharaj bless me to give up teaching and give up this Brahminical nature, and let me become Kshatriya. Because all your genuine disciples who are very qualified preachers, they are all sitting in corners, rotting here and they're neglected. Not, they are of no use to Iskand because they are not good in selling life and the kids. But they may be very good in practicing Krishna consciousness and very good in preaching it. And actually the truth is when educated people preach in this world, it makes a difference because the university has become the cesspool for poisoning and killing all the morality, what to speak of spirituality, of all the students who go to it. Prabhupada's mission, if you look at it from a macro point of view, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur started writing books about Jaitanya Mahaprabhu in English. And he sent it to the universities all over the world. Prabhupada's disciples found the first copy of the Life and Precepts of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in McGill University, which Bhutvinath Thakur had sent there in the year 1896. The very year of Sri Prabhupada's birth. What did Prabhupada's Guru well, what did Bhaktivinoda Thakur pray for? He prayed, send me an Acharya, a son. Please, Jagannath, send me a son who will be capable to be a Vaishnava Acharya. And Jagannath did send him, Bhakti Santa Saraswati Prabhupada. So now the Acharya came, he did his thing, he set up the standards, how things should be done, he implemented all the songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and also the Prabhupada's Acharyas like uh, who had written Samsara Dava and so many things were all beautifully put together and showed this is how you can worship the Lord. 
But Prabhupada's guru then gave him this instruction, which was what? If you ever get money, write books. Oh, how... Oh, how gloriously he fulfilled that instruction. Did he not? Can anyone be a better book publisher, book writer, book distributor than Srila Prabhupada? The profile used to carry a stock of the little booklet called The Scientific Basis of Krishna Consciousness, written by his disciple, our beloved Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Sarukdhamma Prasani Sri Pad Maharaj, known as Dr. P. D. Singh, in that famous book, Life Comes from Life. The Prabhupada would carry that book with him, and Prabhupada would distribute Sri Pad Maharaj's book called The Scientific Basis of Krishna Consciousness. Is that a small thing? Is it that Prabhupada would carry his disciples' books along with him and distribute them, especially to VIPs that he met? Please read this book, www.bit.ly. The link is in the description, bit.ly slash bi-legacy3b, lowercase, bi dash Legacy 3D. It's a small book, maybe 18 pages, written by Shri Prabhupada Maharaj. Then Sri Prabhupada said in a very, very dramatic moment, you know, the biggest drama in Prabhupada's life might well have been that incident of not incident, the whole years of incidents regarding getting the land for Radha Ras Bihari, fighting with Mr. N, then after that struggling to get the construction completed before he left this world. And Srila Prabhupada was finally ready to enter the temple, but the construction was still going on. He was not happy. And two times in that period, he said, it's recorded in this book, this 18th page book, that Prabhupada said, oh, I'm ready to close down this whole complex, this whole Guru complex. It was just about to be open. So it's going to change the whole thing to BI. This one, oh, we'll build another temple for this one. Can you imagine how much envy that evoked from the hearts of the people who wanted to be the owners and the controllers of Guru complex? Ishwara Maham Bhogi. I collected the money. How can Prabhupada give it away? I built this building. You built this building, Tamal. He tried to give it up against Prabhupada's orders. Then when finally Prabhupada occupied his room, he entered. Oh, he was very angry when he arrived that day. And then the lift failed. Then on the palanquin, all these fearful disciples carried him up the stairs. And when he entered and saw his beautiful rooms were finally ready, really his Bombay temple rooms in the Prabhupada Tower, I think on the fifth floor, extremely beautiful. And I think even for today, with such devotion, his disciples maintain it. I heard from His Holiness Mahavishnu Maharaj that Prabhupada had once said, these red walls of the temple, this building, that is my flesh and blood, and the white marble, that is my bones. And he showed his glory, well, Krishna showed his glories, Prabhupada's glories in Bombay. Wow, and if Krishna didn't show, then you know, it would have been so hard for Prabhupada to really establish this worldwide mission, but with what force, what purity. Then at that glorious moment when he finally entered, and then everyone sang Kirtan, you can imagine, you know, how frightened people feel when Prabhupada is ferociously angry, it happens sometimes. Then after that, he calmed down naturally with the Kirtan. And he was feeling nothing but deep gratitude to all these young hippies who had given up their lives, their youth, to come and struggle. Some even got beaten up, even Mataji's got dragged by their hair by, by the Gundas who came to break the temporary temple before the construction started. And now, gloriously, he has entered. The prison, he sang Kirtan and he finished the Kirtan. 
He thanked them profusely and then in front of everyone, in front of all these ecstatic devotees, who were so happy that they finally succeeded in letting Prabhupada occupy his own rooms on that beautiful land. He turned to my Guru Maharaj, the Sri Maharaj, and said, Now the next phase of my mission, it is yours. And he was so pleased with the science conference that had been held just a few days before that. And then he said that I am ready to give you unlimited funding so you can do the science preaching. I'm ready to close down this complex and turn the whole thing into the eye. Then he asked in front of everyone, how much money shall I give you every month? Oh, please, if any of you are still alive, those who were in that room that day, please write about this incident. Can you imagine he never got a single penny? Cheated by Tamal. Tamal was sitting there. He's typed those three letters on that day. Check it out in the database. Nine, uh, 2nd of April, 1977. Or in our group, in our this page, uh, book list, dbt, no, bit.ly slash book changes 27. You can find three links, 19, 19A, 19B, to the three letters. So Prabhupada said, I'm ready to give you unlimited money to continue your science preaching. How much do you want? And then Sri Pan Maharaj answered him, Prabhupada, I am not a good manager. I don't know anything about these things. Please, why don't you ask Tamal Maharaj? He is there and he is sitting there. He, I mean, Tamal is just next to Prabhupada. He said, he knows he's a good manager. Please ask him. So Prabhupada turned to Tamal, how much shall I give him every month? And what did Tamal Krishna say? He said, oh, 10,000 US dollars. And Prabhupada said, yeah, 10,000 mm, are unlimited, as much as he wants, at least 10,000. And Prabhupada said, I will send you that money every month and you give your accounts in return. Then he wrote these three letters to three different BBT leaders. Rameshwara was one of them and other two, you can see. And he wrote in the letter, this money must never be touched for any other purpose. It must be given to Swarup Damodara Das. It's written in the three letters, this money, 10,000 years or as much as he needs, it must be given to Swarup Damodara Das. They never gave once 10 cents. I mean, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if they gave for one or two months and then, you know, after November when Prabhupada passed away, this was in April 27, and maybe then they stopped him, you know. In Prabhupada's presence, the person who typed that letter, the person who spoke the amount, 10,000 US dollars, Tamal, as if he doesn't know that this money should be given every month. Immediately the screening started. Maybe that's why, maybe, maybe that's why he went to do a PhD in the end of his life, because maybe he thought, oh, this person has got a PhD, so that's why he's getting so much of funding. But it doesn't matter. It's not the money that's important. It's the principle of wanting to go directly against your Guru's orders. And the other problem is envious God brothers. If somebody has been chosen to lead something and he was empowered by Srila Prabhupada to do it, then every other scientist comes along and becomes a competitor of him, make their own BI. Everybody has a BI, yes, all unauthorized. And the original BI is languishing somewhere in some court case in Bombay. And I got so damned angry with this Garuda Das Professor Graham Swig who dared to ask me, why do you keep mentioning Bhakti Vedanta Institute in this dear forum of mine, where he wants to keep analyzing, editing? How, does, do you, Professor Graham, do you go into the library and find any dead man's book and start editing it? Please go and see a psychiatrist. And you ask me, oh, I don't see what's the connection with five million dollars and counting 10,000 every month. And then you have the cheat to say, I am a a uh, BI founding member, ah yes, another competitor, all these scholars, all they ever want is to have their name published in a uh, prestigious journal or in a conference uh, proceedings alongside with other famous scientists. And they're very eager that the, uh, their books should be recognized by the mundane community of non-devotional people. Envious of God brothers, my God. So my preliminary thought was a glorification of His Grace, Bodhidev Prabhu. 
who is from Laguna Beach and many of Prabhupada's disciples who may be uh, in this group must know him. He was a very young boy of 18, I think, when he became a disciple of Prabhupada. I was very blessed to have his association too. And I liked him so much. I always used to try and get his association. He even employed me once. And I worked as hard as I could helping him to run his telephone business. But I just liked his association. We shared an apartment together. Now, how lucky I was because I showed him that respect that oh you are a cycle of trouble. Because externally he never, you know, wears devotional dress and this and that. But it's what's in the heart that matters. It's one fifteen. I used to force him to sit in the Vyasa sign and give class even when he's wearing more than three clothes sometimes. Because the moment he gets a chance to start glorifying Prabhupada and speaking about pure Krishna consciousness, then it was pure nectar from his mouth. Anyway, by trying to show some service attitude and respect towards this disciple of Srila Prabhupada, I was blessed because he was somebody who was not envious of Srila Maharaj. And by his own example, of having a service attitude to try and serve Sri Padmara, who was always struggling to try and do all the instructions that Prabhupada gave him. Maharaj felt it was a big burden, not burden, burden of life. But he was so unhappy that not just the money, but in every way his brothers were always obstructing everything he tried to do. And Prabhupada had asked him to do it, but other people want to grab the service away from him. Oh, why? Because it's prestigious or because, oh, I don't know, I could go on forever. But that may be positive. Thank you, Bhajadev Prabhu, for introducing me to Sri Pad Maharaj. And because of your example of not being envious and of serving him, even though I know you have no respect for all these, what you call them, GPC goons and whatnot. Like once I was a little curious, I said to him, after a few years of seeing their interaction and their relationship, full of sweetness, between uh, Bodhadeva and uh, Guru Maharaj. So once I asked Bodhadeva, when we were still living together, I said, Prabhu, how come, you know, many of your godbrothers have no regard for Sri Pad Maharaj, they just treat him like anything. He doesn't demand any respect from anyone. <laughs> like Bodhi used to joke and say, I'm not into all this awe and reverence nonsense. <laughs> But I said, how come you show him so much regard and you so wholeheartedly serve him and, you know, we get inspired also to serve. And Bhagavad very seriously looked me in the eye and he answered. He said, Dina, me and my god brothers, we were all running around in our diapers when Prabhupada was around. And then suddenly Prabhupada is gone and then these fellows with the same dirty diapers they want to sit on the Vyasa sun and hey, worship me, worship me. He said, we didn't have a clue who Prabhupada was and how to deal with him. We didn't know how to speak with him. We were so uncultured. We did not know uh, how to please him. We had no idea. But I was a young man and I saw that this person who always would come every day driving in his car to see Sri Prabhupada, I could see that he was a gentleman and he was very cultured. He was from a Vaishnava family. And he knew very appropriately how to behave with Prabhupada and Prabhupada was very obviously pleased with him and with the service he did. Scientific preaching. Oh, Sripad Maharaj told me once, Dina, I was always hiding from Prabhupada. I would try to hide in some corner and do some service quietly. 
And if you would hear, oh, Dr. Singh is in the temple, and he would send someone, go and bring that Dr. Singh to me. And I would be dragged in front of him. I didn't want that. But what can I do? For seven and a half years, Prabhupada non-stop gave me instructions. Maharaj compiled them into a book. He showed it to me once, more than two of the pages. Said, now look, these are all the instructions that Prabhupada gave me. And you know, every single time I have come across one of my godfathers who has got some service from Prabhupada, I find that that service was also given to me. It was in that list of things. And there is not a single service that I found that any of my godfathers were given that was not also given to me by Prabhupada, and I've recorded it. And on top of that, there were other services which he gave to me, which I have not come across that he has given to anyone else. And he says, oh, I'm such a rascal now. I think soon I will leave this world. And I cannot do all these services for Prabhupada. I can only, at least from my university, I just want to give a start and a direction, and I hope that in future somebody will fulfill it. It was such an important service Prabhupada gave me, Maharaj said. I remember, I think in the year 2000, during the GBC meetings, as usual, everybody was good and rocked with him. Maharaj once said to me, Modina, I am praying for the day will. I was his personal secretary, so it was in confidence. So, Dina, I'm praying for the day we are taking me out of his tongue. I said, what? Maharaj? Why? I think Prabhupada would have been very sad to hear his scorn was so bad that his dear disciple, who never gave trouble even to his enemies, was praying, oh, I pray that I get this time. He said, oh, I said, because my God, my God, just obstructing everything I do. He said, I have so many nice services and I have so many nice projects. They're all ready to move forward, but I just keep getting sabotaged from my own God, God. Never mind if they don't help me. Never mind that they've stolen all the money that the God has set aside for me. I could go on forever, but let me just end there. I have a kill some program to come back for some program downstairs. And I'm really late. Thank you, Bobby Rachel. I hope that people will realize these people who have insulted Prabhupada are controlling the money of the BBT. To hell with anything. It's about money. BBT account has to be revived. BBT trustees have to be changed. All those who are involved, all the trustees who failed the BBC, trust, BBC is a trust. GBC has been registered as an organization now called some strange name, ISKCON GBC, uh, West, the Society of West Bengal. Nonsense, another bogus sinister movement. GBC is a trust, trustees can be trained, and the beneficiary of the trust will be the ISKCON temples. But the BBT trustees must not be under the control of the GBC and ISKCON. That is written in the BBT founding document. BBT has been closed down, practically. It can't be legally, it's still alive. As long as the beneficiary is alive, the trust is alive. But the assets have all been removed and transferred into BPTI Incorporated, and they won't even tell to my Guru Maharaj, even though he asked for six years, they won't even tell. Who are the people controlling the money and making decisions to fund that rascal Raj and to deny my Guru Maharaj the funding he needed to build his universities? Unlimited funding, the third point here. When Srila Gauravinda Maharaj was another great Vaishnava, when he asked Prabhupada for money to build uh, Bhuvaneshwa because he said, I'm living in the jungle, I have no money, can I take a loan from it? Prabhupada said, refused to give him any money. He said, no, you don't ask Krishna for money. But look, Sri Pad Maharaj, because education must be funded. Don't you see, Bhaktivana Thakur wanted the world to, to worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His son came and set up the way how to do everything and made newspapers, used the printing press. Prabhupada printed the books and distributed them in all the languages of the world. So what's the next phase? The next phase, Prabhupada said on that day in his room when he first occupied the Bombay Temple, as I described just now, the next phase will be yours, scientific preaching. Modern science is ruining the world. The purity of the consciousness, because it's all based on avidya, the idea that I am this body, therefore I have to enjoy as much as possible. Therefore the science of consciousness needs to be promoted in the same way that it is taught in the Bhagavadam. I can go on for a little, but let me end here.
Tripad Maharaj was a wonderful soul. Those who know him are dedicated to Mataji. Thank you. You too glorified my Guru Maharaj to me without any envy. But many people did not know of his problems. He wanted the last year, last GBC meeting, he asked them, I'm tired, more than 30 years while are cheating me and bullying me in the corner. Now I finally want to bring up my problems before the full body of the GBC and tell all my god brothers all my problems. And they told him, no, we will never allow you to do so. We will never allow you in this lifetime to speak to the full body of it. And Guru Mahari was shocked. He said, why? But I'm in good standing. I was appointed for life by Srila Prabhupada. Why won't you allow me? No, we will not allow you. Well, you know, they have embezzled $5 million. They have kicked him out. Gopal Krishna did that. Kicked him out of B.I. Bombay. You know, just after the temple was opened, Prabhupada wrote a letter to Tamal and even told him personally several times, I want you to give the best part of the Juhu temple complex to Swarup Dhamma Karabhas. And Tamal Krishna did tell my mother, and what was selected, the whole of the second floor. And I've heard this Leela, once somebody asked Prabhupada, why did you get the whole of the second floor? You know, Juhu temple, second floor means overlooking the deities, overlooking the temple courtyard. So beautiful, those rooms. Why did you give the whole of the second floor to behind? And what was Prabhupada's answer? Why whole of the second floor? I'm ready to close down the entire six acres complex and turn the whole thing into B.I. The B.I.'s mission is much more important than his home's mission. Oh, and Professor Shri, founder member of B.I. But I don't see the connection between B.I.D. and B.I. Professor Shri, please wake up. Keep on editing books in hell. Hare 